All right, guys, I've got Dr. Glover. He is one of my mentors, one of my favorite people, and one of the massive, massive resources that I put into the Marriage Reset. And I know you know it because you're DMing me, nice guy, all the time for more information about the nice guy triangle, so on and so forth. So let's not waste any time. Dr. Glover, thank you for being on the show. I would love to... Oh, by the way, guys, if you don't know no more Mr. Nice Guy yet, and you're struggling in your marriage, you're struggling in relationships in your life, you need to be reading this book. Okay, it's one of my go to resources. And by the man here, Dr. Robert Glover. So, Dr. Glover, I wanted to have you on today because I'm so impressed with the work that you've done. Obviously, it's changed my life. It's changed so many men's lives. Um, and I see it every day with the work that I do. But you're doing something special right now. And it's this integration nation. It's this power of men's groups, this tribe that you're like when I see even a lot of my coaches are, are visiting your 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 platform here you're trying to get involved and i want more men to know about this can we okay. can we have a bit of an introduction about this please sir cash thanks for thank you for having me on the show uh it's good to be here it's good to see you again and um ah yeah I, like i i was i was telling Cass just before we went on record i'm exhausted but but it's a good exhaustion i've been working for over a year to to build an online platform uh, a men's uh subscription membership community that, that I want it to be like nothing else that's out there to where we provide men with community, tribe, masculine initiation. And there, and there are so, so many great programs out there, men's coaches, you know, coaching men up, leveling men up, giving them community, giving them connection, giving them accountability. And I, I just know that I began my own personal recovery from what I came to call nice guy syndrome uh, by, by going to uh, basically a men's group is a 12 step group. Uh, it was all men. And then I later found a, a men's group and, and I'm still in a men's program. I've been in one for five years. All of my deepest work has been in groups of groups of men where I'm loved, where I'm held accountable, where I can put out my internal crazy thinking, where, uh, you know, I, I can get affirmation that, you know, I, I'm not broken. There's not something wrong with me where I can just laugh and be silly and have fun and play with other men. And so I've done most of, of my significant life um, progression in groups of men. I'm still doing it that way. At one time when I was in private practice as a therapist, I was leading five men's groups a week, in-person men's groups a week. And so I, I, I got the inspiration. I, actually, one of my certified coaches gave me the inspiration about a year and a half ago. So, Robert, you can start a membership program for men. And, you know, you can pack everything you've ever done in it. You can give men direction. You get your certified coaches working in it. I thought, Hey, I was thinking about retiring <laughs> and I thought, all right, I'll, 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 I'll give it a look. I'll give it a thought. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, yeah, I need to do this. It, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably in a pretty unique position in terms of just because of the visibility of my book and the work that I've done and the reputation that I have. I thought, you know, I'm probably in a pretty unique position to do something that maybe not too many other people could pull off. And I thought, no, I was kind of thinking about maybe semi-retirement. And I thought, no, I'm, I'm going to. So I brought on a crew of about seven of my coaches and started working with them, talking about it, planning it. I thought, you know what? I got another good 20 years. I'm all in. And, and, I love and, that, it. and, and you know, cause I, okay. You know, I, I, I do. I, you know, uh, you know, I, I assume God's got a plan for me, whatever that looks like. You know, I'm not religious, but I, you know, I, I I'm here for a reason and it, everything keeps pointing to building this, this worldwide community of men, because we men need community. We need tribe. We need masculine initiation. And uh, we've been working on it. I, I'm exhausted because last week we launched Monday. Last week's just been day and night working with my team. Um, the, the enrollment's open right now for it as, as you and I are talking. I just got off a call just before this, which is a drop-in call for people wanting to come ask questions about the program. And um and it's off to an amazing start. The technology that we've spent, you know, hundred thousand dollars on and worked on for a year, working beautifully. It's going to have online forum for guys to communicate, online chat, an online calendar directing men to. Right now, we're going to launch with seven Zoom calls a week that men can jump nice. in on. And so, and and in the very near future, we may be adding, you know, what we call tribe calls for men in German. Uh, uh, Polish, Danish, Hindi, you know, right now they're, they're primarily English, but it, this is truly going to be a, a worldwide uh, connecting place for men. And, um, you know, everybody I talk to, 
people like you, people I talk to that are, that are coaching and working with men. My, my financial advisor is so excited. You know, he's 70 years old. He, he manages his money. But, you know, um, uh, he, he said, Robert, this is so great what you're doing. So everywhere I go, I keep getting the affirmation. This is needed. It's the right direction. When I was writing no more, Mr. Nice Guy, I got the same kind of constant affirmation. Robert, people need this book. Robert, there's lots of nice guys out there. Robert, you got to get this book out in the world. So Integration Nation feels a lot like that, like no more Mr. Nice Guy did, that, yeah, right. it's why I'm here. It's what, it's what I got to get done. And uh, I, I'm smiling from ear to ear because, you know, we, we pulled it off. We launched. It's, it's working. And the guys are streaming in. I'm already reading the online forum. Guys are so happy. I'm so glad to be here. This is great. I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, I'm just smiling from ear to ear because I just I love seeing men, you know, show up have a forum to be themselves, to be real, to be authentic, to get supported, to, to be held accountable, to get good tools, good information, and um, and just be with guys. What, what a blessing to just be with guys. I love that. And for sure, I believe it's purpose. Absolutely. You, I mean, we talked a lot about that in, in programs with you, but, you know, I've seen over and over and over again with men in their failing marriages what can happen? I didn't even have a men's group, my marriage doors. I didn't have that for the first, I don't know, 10 months ago in viral, but the power of men, like you said, holding each other accountable, shooting the shit, just being, well, the problem is like so many guys that I see, Dr. Glover there, they've got their wife, their job and their kids. Yeah. That's yeah. it. They've, they've lost themselves. So I know that this is one massive part of why it's so important. But something that I really dove into after working with you was the shame, the guilt, the feeling of toxicity towards yourself with some of the things that you've done wrong in your life. And we can, of course, yeah. elaborate with that. And, and of course, now I'm really, the more men I work with, I'm getting a lot of guys, uh, you know, cast saved my life, you know, and I was hoping that you could kind of touch on some of the, the, the harder things than just being held accountable, just uh, you know, needing support so that I can keep taking steps forward. Can you, yeah. can you, you've got a lot well, more experience than I do. Let's, well, let's talk about, let's talk about relationships. Um, it, it sounds like a good context and a good way to, uh, to, to launch this. I got a PhD in marriage and family therapy at 29 years old. So I, I was a young man. I was in my first marriage. Um, and I can honestly say I bumbled my way through every relationship I've had. And, you know, you think, well, with a PhD, I'd be prepared. I'd have it right. You, you, know, <laughs> I, I, you know, I tell people no more Mr. Nice Guys, my dating books, every book, I've, I've ever, all my material, everything I teach has come out of what I've struggled with. And and I figure I've always figured if I struggle with it, maybe somebody else does, too. And apparently I'm right because, you know, I seem to resonate with, with especially with men because I talk about what I've struggled with. I used to joke that after I got divorced from my second wife in my late 40s, so say when I'm around 50-ish, I, you know, I, I, I got good at dating because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn to date well because if I want a different kind of relationship, I got to be a better picker and a better ender. And so I thought, I, I've got to get good at this if I want a different result. And so I did. I got good at dating. So my clients are saying, Robert, teach us. I'm not a dating guru. I, but, so I started teaching them what I was doing. And in all of this, the things that I found out, and again, I, I've learned from just bumbling my way through and making mistakes. I used to joke, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a marriage therapist who's been divorced twice and a dating coach that doesn't have a girlfriend. And people still line up and pay me money. And mainly because I think I, I, I talk to them about where I've struggled, what's been hard for me, what I didn't understand. And really what I, I'll bring it back to, so, so I, guess I'm, I guess I'm somewhat of a relationship expert through 40 years of doing this, degree wise, my own personal struggles. But here's the deal. Um, dating is not part of our human DNA. It's only existed less than a hundred years, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. our, our grandparents didn't date, you know, they, they, they married their sisters or brother's best friend or somebody that was on the farm next door or who they went to church with, or they went to school with, or, it was arranged by two families. I mean, in some places of the world, I still work with adult men who have arranged marriages, right? Mm -hmm. So dating didn't exist. It's not part of our, our human DNA. 
the idea of romantic love, I, I'm going to get with somebody because they're my soulmate. You know, they're, they're my split apart. They're, they're, they're my, you know, you know, one and only. Um, that idea has only existed maybe about 200 years. And I heard uh, that, that Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet to point out the fallacy, the folly of romantic love. Oh, let's, we love each other so much. Let's kill ourselves. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We all know that we fall in love and go, yeah, I think I am ready to kill myself now. How do I get out? <laughs> How do I get out of here? I, I, I loved her, but now, you know. so, and then, he, then the bigger piece of this is that long-term pair bonded monogamous relationships, with a member of the opposite sex with whom we live in the same house with and see all the time is definitely not in our human DNA. For a million and a half years, we were tribal. We were hunters. We were gatherers. Everything was shared in common, including resources, food, and everybody had access to everybody in the tribe for, for sexual connection. The tribe all raised the kids together. We did not start pairing up and creating what I call ownership relationships so about 10,000 years ago, and about 10,000 years ago, when we quit being communal and everything is shared, men started saying, well, this piece of land is mine. This tree is mine. This cow is mine. This goat is mine. This woman and her vagina is mine. These kids that come out of this woman are mine. And, and that's now what we call the patriarchy. And that's existed for about 10,000 years. And patriarchy isn't all evil. Yeah, it's got some dark, bad stuff, but it was it, part of it was about providing and protecting. But the point is, for less than 10,000 years, we've been trying to have these lifelong pair bonded relationships with one person of the opposite sex who sees the world completely different than us, wants something completely different from relationship than what we want. And, and this all began in a period of time when somebody was lucky if they lived to be 25 years old. Right. So lifelong pair bonded relationship might have been, you know, about as long as somebody's, you know, tender relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we've been together, you know, three weeks now. That's a lifetime for our ancestors. <laughs> so the, the reason I make this point is that we live in a culture and I don't care what culture you're in worldwide, because it's pretty much the same around the world. So I've worked with people all over the world that we have this idea that this should work. We should be able to do it. We should be good at it. We shouldn't struggle. We shouldn't fail at it. We shouldn't have problems. And, 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 and you know, and, and if a relationship ends, if a marriage ends, it's a failed marriage. Like we're a failed person, right? So what's happening, and this is especially true for men, women tend to, I'm going to make some generalizations. Women go out and they talk to their sisters. They talk to other women. Oh, I'm struggling with this. Oh, my husband did that. Or my husband's a jerk. Or, I, I just can't get him to do that. You know, they go talk, 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 talk. And they're like, oh yeah, mine too, mine too. Right? And they talk, 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 talk. Mm -hmm. We men go, oh God, she's being a bitch to me. Oh God, she never wants to have sex anymore. Oh God, I, I, she, she won't let me see my friends. She's turned every one of my guy friends into a villain and she gets mad at me and says, I don't care about her if I go on it. I, you know, and, and who do we talk to that about? Who do we talk with? No one. It's an echo chamber in our own head. Yeah, mm -hmm. How come she's so mean to me? How come she never wants to have sex anymore? How come I never do it good enough? How come I never get it right? How come, how come? But we don't talk to anybody. We just carry it inside. And, and, you know, and so we internalize it. We just go work more. Go watch more TV. Go sneak around and look at porn on the internet. Go go drink more. Go smoke more pot. Go waste time on the internet. Go turn it into our body and, and you know, it, it break our body. Turn it into depression. Um, that's what happens with men. That, that's why men are in such a vulnerable state in today's, on today, on the planet nowadays. We're vulnerable. And, and just, you know, a little bit of a side plug here going back to like, why I'm such a believer in men's groups, men's programs, integration nation, you know, you working with groups, of, you know, again, we need groups of men to, cause our ancestor grew up with they, all of our ancestors, whether it's tribal ancestors, they got initiated by masterful men at 12 years old into the tribe and into the scary world of the masculine. And then they had a support system the rest of their life to do it for about the last 10,000 years. Boys grew up around their fathers, their grandfathers, their uncles, their cousins, and, and maybe they, 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 they were trained to go do a job, you know, putting horseshoes on a horse by another masterful man. And now for about the last hundred years, boys are raised by their mothers, absent fathers, the educational system, 
and, and boys just never learn how to connect with masterful men. Yet they're expected to know, which is always pressure. Yeah. And you touched on yeah. some, you touched on some incredible points. So they need to be vulnerable, but they don't know how. They're not. They're expected to know what. To and do. and with whom? Have, and with whom? And and I don't know exactly your your full history, but I was embarrassed to talk about the fact that my wife didn't want me. I mean, I'm going to go tell another dude that. Yeah. You know what I mean, look like less of a man. Yeah. And so when you're expected to know, she doesn't want you. You start having these talks with her. She's putting you in your place, so to speak. And I think that all of a sudden, I mean, I had those thoughts back in the day, you know, it'd be, I have a life insurance policy. It just maybe be easier, you know, and the amount of men that I, yeah, hear it, that it is not a good thing that if you're worth more to your wife or partner dead mm -hmm. than alive, that's not a good paradigm. A hundred percent. But because I think again, you're expected to just know, you know, this, yeah, this, this, we're expected this, to know. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing with a guy like, as men, we're, we're expected to know just exactly how to get her off and what to do. PP goes here, you know, P and V, let's do this thing. Who, who and it's taught like, us that? Yeah, who taught us yeah, that? Yeah. Our, our dads <laughs> didn't. Our mothers didn't. My mother no. said, you know, be a gentleman, treat women with respect, which basically meant, you know, I meant hide your sexual agenda. Don't let them know you want to put your parts in their parts. You know, pretend that that, that and, and you're right, because we, we're as men, I like to speak in terms of, of, of energies and, and energetic systems. And so I like to speak in terms of, and this kind of metaphorical, masculine, feminine energies. I don't just mean guy or, or woman. But a masculine energy is, is about doing and penetrating and getting things done masterfully. Feminine energy is about being done too, about penetrating, about receiving and, and wanting to, to receive masterful penetration. We all have a masculine and feminine side. We all do. We have that mass, men and women both. We have a, a masculine side that wants to get things done and feels validated and feels good about ourselves from doing things well, masterfully. We have a feminine side that needs to be nurtured, that needs to be loved on, that needs to be filled, that needs to be taken care of, that wants that flow of love, that wants approval, wants external validation and praise. That's the feminine side. We all have it. So what's happening is we now have a culture of men, since little boys have been told, you're bad for being a boy. Don't do that. That's bad. Yeah. Or, or we've, we've made a decision to be different from our fathers. Or, you know, boys now in elementary school are hearing the term toxic masculinity at school, right? And, you know, and you go anywhere on the Internet. And so men keep getting the message, don't be a dude. Don't be a guy. Don't be a man. Men, men, are, men are evil. Men are bad. Men are, men are the patriarchy. Men have caused all the problem in this world. And so mm -hmm. while we're trying to not be a dude or be a man and figure out what else is left to us, how do I go please these feminine entities, our, our mothers, our, our, our girlfriends, our wives, you know, women in general? How do we how do we figure out how to please them so that I can get love and validation and sexual access? How, how do I do that? And because we don't know. And so, again, I'm convinced to shift this paradigm, starting with boys, we've got to get them with masterful men and men yes. need masterful men to show us. You know, how do you talk to a woman? How do you get your taxes done? How do you get in shape and stay in shape? How do you build that business you want to build? How, how, how do you be vulnerable? How do you release toxic shame? How, how do you make a commitment and stick to it? We learn that stuff from other masculine entities who, 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 who are about that internal validation of a job well done, a job done masterfully. And so I'm a big fan of, of both personally and, and helping men learn how to live a masterful life. Um, you know, building this, this business integration nation, like it's been over a year. Fuck. I've grown so much. I mean, my late, <laughs> I'm in my late sixties. I've been an entrepreneur or a businessman. I haven't gotten a paycheck since 1988. Right. Uh, that's probably longer than maybe a lot of your listeners have been alive. Right. So I've been doing, you know, I've been working for me since I was, you know, early 30s, I'm late 60s. And I tell you what, I have become so much more masterful at being a businessman in the last year because I've surrounded myself with good men. 
I've studied, I've read, I've, I've, I've just done everything. So, so whether it's me running my business, learning how to use the, my mic, I got this great now dual monitor, you know, set up with my Mac mini. I've learned how to use digital cameras to record videos. You know, I've spent time on YouTube figuring out how to do all these masterful things. I've learned from other masterful people. Now, whether we learn it on YouTube, whether we learn it in a tribe, whether we learn it just going out camping with a buddy and being real, you know, there's no right way to do it. But again, we've got to learn from masterful people. And that means we got to be able to connect with them some way or another. Yeah. And I just personally learned. I mean, I used to chase the validation of women most of my life. I, oh, I got that guilty. started with started that with mom, trying to be different than dad. Luckily, I did play sports. I enjoyed that. I connected with men that way. But about 40 years ago, I thought, I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to go seek out connection with men, you know, and quit seeking the approval and connection with women. That changed my life. It, it's, it's when I, you know, again, got into men's groups. Anytime I'm in a public place, now I talk to the men. Even when I was single and dating, yeah, I talked to the women, but I talked with the men around me, which made me more attractive to the women because I was exactly. connecting yeah. with men. So I, you know, if, I, if, if, if your listeners haven't figured it out yet, I'm a big fan <laughs> of men connecting deeply with men, whether it's us being vulnerable and real and holding each other and crying together or getting up and dancing and bumping asses and chest and being silly together. I'm just a big fan of doing that stuff with men. I think it's so important. I mean, let, let's just go with the crying, for example. Now you've released it. You can go bring the energy that you need to bring out everywhere else in the world. Let's go with the bump in the asses and, and have a, a great laugh. You still have the energy. You can keep going. Yeah. Right. You know, I think it's you also touched on something that's just magical, in my opinion. You know, I think a lot of men in relationships, especially trying to get the approval from their wife or or their long term. Yeah, they, they've done that. Yeah, so, so many times. But they think that, you know, it's just about the buddy. But you talked about the, exactly however you learn it from the men that you're with. That's all that matters. But you're learning you're growing. You talked about in, in when you talk about integration nation earlier, you talked about even brought up taxes, right? Yeah, like, yeah. This is the point when you're, I always say you're never done leveling up. You're never done. I, I'm like, with you. Enjoy I'm the ride. You. Yeah. You know? And so that's the power. I think that too many, too many men have been hiding who they are, which of course you address in, in nice guy, but they're hiding who they are and they're afraid to go out and, do everything they want, follow that example, learn the next skill, lead somebody else, being one step ahead of somebody, they can be a leader. All of it has just been, it's been pulled from them in today's time. Well, and you know, and, and you know what, I think there's, there's actually, like I said, there's a lot of stuff here that men struggle with that I try to tell them that's normal that you struggle with it. Yeah. Okay. If, 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 it, if it's not in your human DNA or if you've never been taught to do it or don't have good role models or don't have a coach or a mentor, of course, you're going to struggle. And so, you know, kind of like putting this kind of almost more, almost more kind of like, um, in, let's say work and career kind of concept. You know, a lot of guys say, well, I'm afraid to go for that promotion or, you know, I'm afraid to go, you know, launch, quit my job and launch my own company. Or I've gotten this promotion, but I, I feel lost and I'm working way too many hours because I don't want them to know I don't know what I'm doing. And, and so, again, what we don't realize is that anytime you leave your comfort zone, Anytime you get out of what you know, where you have neural pathways, where you've done it enough times, practiced it enough times, you can do it in your sleep, and you go someplace you don't know, whether that's getting a promotion to you know a new to, uh, a new department, new division, or a higher responsibility, whether it's launching you know a company and you, you've never launched a business before, no matter what it is, I tell guys, well, I, I feel. I feel over my head. I have imposter syndrome. I'm going to be found out. People can find out I don't know what I'm doing or I'm not good at it. Or I'm going to fail. And I said, everybody feels that way when they leave their comfort zone. Everybody is in the imposter syndrome zone. Because right, right. we don't know what we're doing, right? I didn't know what I was doing when I started building Integration Nation. I didn't know what I was doing when I wrote No More Mr. Nice Guy. It took me seven years to write it. And I told people I was both learning about nice guy syndrome. I was working on me and a lot of my clients. Were, I was coming, and I was learning how to write a book. I didn't know anything about nice guy syndrome. I didn't know anything about writing books. But I, you know, by the process of doing it, and then when I finally finished the book, I go, who's going to read this? Who am I? Who am I to publish a book? I'm not a writer. And then, you know, after the book came out and was out for a few years and was selling well, 
I kind of woke up one morning and thought, I think I'm a writer. I, 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 I think I, I think I qualify as an author. I made it. I made it. I, I'm a writer. I, you know, I thought, but you know, I, I didn't see myself as a writer while I was writing a book. I was in, I was out of my comfort zone. I was in foreign territory. So again, you know, the information I give men over and over again, again, I, I love that. This is what you learn. Men learn in groups. Men come down here. You know, you did an online workshop with me. I do, I do online stuff. Guys come down here to Puerto Vallarta where I live in Mexico. Come to a small eight to 10 group of guys. Almost, it's almost unanimous after like the first night here at a workshop. And all we do is share why we're here. What's going on in our life? What's not working well? And guys are being real all, right off the bat, being vulnerable, talking about struggles in their marriage, talking about depression, talking about um uh, you know, drug use, talking about addiction, talking about porn use, talking about, you know, compulsive masturbation, talking about not getting laid. They're talking about all this stuff. And, and all of a sudden you just see the room get lighter and guys start saying, I'm not alone. I'm not the yes. only one. I thought I was the only person on the entire planet that couldn't quit. Stop looking at porn. I thought I was the only person on the whole planet that stayed up way too late at night binging on Netflix. I thought I was the only person on the whole planet that couldn't quit smoking a J every night to try to get to sleep, right? And, and you don't know that until you get in that group of men and guys get vulnerable, they get real. And, and like I said, the point I want to keep bringing it back to, everything in life by nature is difficult. Everything, you know, making exactly. money is difficult. You know, being who you are is difficult. Being a man is difficult. Being in a relationship is difficult. Fucking a woman well is difficult, right? All these things are supposed to be challenging to us. But all I keep saying is we're not, we're not born knowing them. That's okay. If we have connection and guidance from masterful men and just know that, oh, okay, I'm not the only one that struggles with this. Ah, I can relax now and just be more natural about it. And not be thinking, I got to get this right. Okay? No matter what it is, whether it's doing our taxes, getting a promotion, or, or fucking our woman well. No, you don't have to go, you know, I don't know what I'm doing, but I got to do it. Just relax. You're not alone. What are our resources? How can we learn to do this more effectively? How can we get support from other men that will support us and teach us and guide us and cheer for us and laugh with us and hold us? How do we do that? That's Those are the key pieces for me. I, I love that. And, you know, you know, speaking from experience, you know, when I started to move on social media, I wasn't giving the whole truth. I was still ashamed. <laughs> I was still scared of letting the world know. And through working with men like yourself, I started to just share the truth. Yeah. I emotionally, physically, sexually assaulted Catherine. I, I well, I, I was a terrible, terrible, abusive asshole. Yeah. But in releasing that, through the experience of sharing with other men, we are now in a position where we're helping other people. We're leading other people, not just even just men, but men and women around the world, children. Oh, yeah. The men that men and women that we lead are leading other kids. <clears throat> and I think that you, you mentioned it several times, and it's so important. When you understand that you're not alone, if, if you know, working with you, for example, being able to release more of of what I just needed to get out, just get off the, the weight of the world off my chest. Yeah. Holy shit. The, the amount of people that were, I actually, I used to, I choked my wife out a few times, like, whoa, okay, hold on, let's talk. And you can build and you can build and you can build. This is not possible if you keep this inside. Yeah, you know, you know and, and no more Mr. Nice Guy. I make the point. I say nice guys are just like Teflon guys. We we'll want everything to look good, nothing to stick to us, never anybody mad at us, don't want to fuck up, don't want to make a mistake, everything's got to look good on the outside. But one of the things I say is that people don't connect to Teflon. They don't te they, people don't mm -hmm. connect to each other smooth. You, you know, you've got your rough edges, I've got my rough edges. That's what people connect with. Because if you didn't have any rough edges, I'd probably think you were boring and just having no <laughs> real reason. But, you know, I, I like you because of the ways you're less than perfect. And, and, and I found that to be true consistently. So I know, for example, a, a feedback I get from a, a lot, a lot of men is that Robert, I appreciate how authentic you are, that you're real, that you're just open. You just, you know, tell it like it is you're you, you know, you, you share your mistakes, you let it. And I always laugh and I said, listen, 30, 40 years ago, nobody would have accused me of being authentic. That, that would not <laughs> have happened, you know, and I would not 
and, and the irony to that is the harder I was trying to be perfect and look good and do it right, the less love I had in my life. Yes. Now that I just, I, I'm, I'm me, man. You know, I, I, I've thought, you know, as I, I get kind of maybe bigger in this world and what I do, I might, I might be more in the spotlight to get more attacked by, you know, you know, who, whoever wants to go attack people that are in the spotlight. And, you know, they might start saying kind of like the hashtag me too thing. Well, you did that. Or you did that. Or we've got somebody that said you did that. And I, I know I can just say to them, listen, everything I've ever done is public knowledge. Right? Yeah, it's, you, all, it's free. You, you aren't going to expose anything that isn't <laughs> already out there. And I said, in fact, if you want to sit down and have a conversation, I said, I'll give you an hour of time. I'll give you even more detail than probably <laughs> what you already know. Right? It's out there. <clears throat> I'm not hiding it. I'm less than perfect. I've fucked up. I've hurt people. I've made mistakes. And you know what? How the fuck else are we going to learn if we don't stumble and make mistakes? Isn't and, that and, right? And, yeah, I'm trying to pretend like we don't or hide them all. You know, like I say, no more Mr. Nice Guy for a nice guy. If at first you don't succeed, hide the evidence. Oh, <laughs> I remember. I remember. Yeah, if, if you don't succeed, ask why. You know, I, I, this little bracelet right here. It's, it's, I'm, I'm giving them to people that, that come into Integration Nation. It just says do better. And then it has integrationnation.net on the other side. It just says do better. And I've been wearing this for about two months. This simple little you know, rubber bracelet, I, I can look at it, read it, the do better part. And you know what? Since I've been wearing it, my marriage has gotten better. Who would think a marriage could get better from wearing a simple little rubber bracelet? Because what it does, if I get moving too quick and I stub my toe, it reminds me, Robert, slow down, slow down. If I, if, I, if I drop something, I'll go, okay, why did I just drop that? Well, I wasn't paying attention, right? Slow down. You know, my wife kind of gets irritable, and I find myself getting reactionary. And I go, Robert, take a breath, ground yourself. You know, uh, or, you know, later on, you know, she says, well, you, you didn't listen to me. And I go, she was right. I wasn't giving her my full attention. Give her full attention, you know, pay attention. And, you know, Robert, Need to set a boundary there. Robert, need to tell the whole truth there. It, it's just this little thing says do better. And I don't need to be better. I'm not going to ever be, a, I don't need to change me. I'm, I'm okay. But I can do better. I can level up. I can be always. more masterful always. And, you know, if it's as simple, it's just a reminder to tug on that. I, I, I can listen better. I can slow down. I can take the moment to be more conscious of how my wife needs to receive love from me. Maybe she doesn't receive love for all these things I do for her, or even all the times I tell her she's beautiful or she looks hot. Maybe her way of receiving love is where we have this strong depth of physical connection together. Oh, but I'm busy. I, I, I got this business to launch. And now, okay, that leaves my wife feeling unloved. That's not doing better. I might be saving the men of the world, but if my wife isn't feeling loved by me, that's not yeah. better. So that's even made me, you know, just, okay, I got work to do. My wife jokes, my, my assistant's name is Henrik, my tech assistant. She goes, you're, you've talked to Henrik more than you talk to me. And I go, you're, <laughs> you're probably right. I said, you probably are right. And, and then that's always a sign not to defend myself. You know, oh, I mean, I got work. Say, how can I do better that my wife feels more loved and more connected to me? Like right? a priority, yeah. And, and so, you know, that's, we don't have to be good, look perfect, be flawless. You know, you and I wouldn't have a job if that was required of us. But the truth of <laughs> it is, the more we bumble our way through life and can talk about it, what, you know, where I messed up, where I was less than perfect, where I could have done better, where, how I've learned to do better, men will eat that up. If you can say, I could have done that better, here's what I've learned, here's how I now know to do it better, men will say, I, 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 teach me, teach me. I want to know, I want to know what you're doing. Now, if we're out there going, I got all the answers, come to me. I got all the answers. I figured it out. I do everything right. You know, m maybe a few people will come sign up for you, but nah, not really. You know that. I'll, I know. I'll, I'm going to try that. I'm going to apply that to my social media. I'll let yeah. you know how it goes. Look, I'm but... perfect, everybody. I got all the answers. <laughs> um, you touched on something really cool without even knowing it, I think, in the importance of men's groups. You know, I have, I believe it's a wicked program from all the courses, books, everything that I've taken, you know, including your stuff. And of course, you've got all your programs. All these wonderful, masterful men have these great programs for men out there. But something is always going to be missing if you 
think about all those little examples you just gave when you snap your bracelet, when you look at your bracelet and you realize this is a little skill. It's another little skill, another thought process, another, you cannot learn everything from a book, from a course. <laughs> but if you are spending a lot of your time with the right men, you will pick up skill after skill after skill. And you will be able to ask questions and you'll be able to say, Hey, what about this? And just like you said, I didn't get it right, but I tried this. What do you think? I've noticed that when, when Lords are teaching Lords, man, they reflect back in so fast and go, shit, I could have done that better. Oh, wait. And they start bouncing these skills off. And yeah. I'm guessing with integration nation, because with everything I'm doing, I haven't dug in as much as I need to right now with your stuff, but I'm guessing with integration nation, this is with, with the way that you described it before, we're going to be learning a whole lot more skills in, in there. We are. And, and you know, it's, it, it's skills is life principles. We're creating structures that we're going to ask people to, you know, to, to, to level themselves up. Even the way we introduce ourselves to each other on a call is going to have a formula, not because that's the right way to do it or makes you a better person. It's just to make us more conscious, right? Everything we're going to do is about being more conscious creating a container that lets us go risk and be vulnerable and, 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 and learn and be connected with each other. And I agree with that. I remember reading a quote by uh, uh, a tennis pro. He said, you know, you, you, you can't really learn to play tennis by reading a book. You really have to have a coach and get out there and practice and have a coach telling you what you're not doing right and, and how to, what you do do right. And, and that's life. You know, I, I, I'm around so many men. You're probably around a lot of men's coaches. I'm around a lot of men's coaches. I'm around a lot of men that are into self-improvement. And, and you know, both guys working with me to, to you know, uh, with me coaching them. Or I just got a lot of men friends that are coaches, right? Lots of them. My men's program is filled with men's coaches. And I, <laughs> yeah. and I, and I often give men, men's coaches shit because they, there's this thing around coaches. And that is, you know, we're always going to more – coaching training programs, always going to more marketing programs, always paying more money to go figure out how to market that and coach that and do that and do that. And, and one of the things I tell guys, you probably already have enough information to significantly change your life. You know, apply that thing that you, that you mm. paid, you know, the 5,000, $10,000 for that workshop two years ago, but now I got to go to this other workshop. You know, I think probably whatever you got out of that first workshop, probably enough to significantly change your life. And, and, and so one of the things I teach coaches about, I said, when was the last time you read a fiction book, book of mm -hmm. fiction, not self improvement, I remember that in, our, in our training, not, not coaching, not marketing fiction. Cause think about this for a minute. And, and, and cause I, I like to read. I didn't when I was a kid, but luckily my dad instilled the joy of reading in me and I love to read. And, um, you know, if I can read, you know, a dozen fiction books a year, I I'm happy all the way from classics like, you know, Old Man in the Sea, Count of Monte Cristo. I've, I've been reading uh, the Odyssey. All right. Every, every, really every fiction book is probably based on that hero's journey of the Odyssey. Right. And, and so, and I mean, you know, I, I, I just like, I like fiction, but think about this as men, when we were growing up in tribes, we learned hands-on from, from other men, you know, how, how to make a spear, you know, how, how, to, how to fight, how, how, to, how to skin an animal, how to cook it, probably how to fuck a woman. We learned from hands-on. And throughout all history, people, men, women, have told stories. We, we're, 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 a, 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 we're a storytelling animal. Right. The, you know, if you look at archetypical stories, you know, the Odyssey is one of them. There's archetypes of stories that have been passed on long before that was written. The book of Genesis is archetypal, archetypal stories, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, the flood, you know, all that. Those stories actually exist in a lot of other, you know, uh, recorded histories because they're archetypal. They've been around. They're telling the same. They're, they're, they're conveying principles of what you need to know <coughs> uh, about living. And so if you think about it, Fiction is a continuation of, of this human need to tell stories about how to live life and how to live it well and the mistakes that you can make and, and the redemption that you can have. Movies are often an extension of that as well. Not always, but, but often are as well. But most fiction is a retelling of the hero's journey in one way or another. And I'm a big fan of telling people, okay, you've read enough self-help books. 
You've gone to enough marketing programs, okay? Go read a fiction book. Go read The Count of Monte Cristo. Go read The Old Man in the Sea. You know, read some Hemingway. Read some Steinbeck. Read some Shakespeare. Go read, because that is where life is communicated. And if you want to communicate to the people you work with, is what, how, what needs to be communicated is in those stories. Like, for example, probably in the last year, you know, out of a dozen books I've read in the last year without realizing it going in, they've all been about death in one way or another. I, I, somebody suggested, I, I loved Kurt Vonnegut when I was in high school. So I went back and read Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut, all about death. Everything I've read, uh, uh, um, yeah, everything seemed to have death about it. Well, maybe death is a universal theme. Maybe every guy listening to this, if he hasn't started struggling with death yet, he's, he's just, you know, one, one, one you know, car accident, one loss of a loved one, one serious disease away from death becoming more of a reality. Um, you know, depression, if you think about it, is really contemplating death, contemplating nothingness. And so fiction takes us in to the depth of that. So anyway, I didn't mean to get off on that tangent. Yeah, but I like stuff yeah. like that, though. It's yeah, good. anyway, so yeah, that's just <laughs> a tangent I get on sometimes. Go <laughs> well, read I a good you... fiction book. Go read, you I'll tell, tell every one of your male listeners, if you go read Old Man in the Sea. Ernest Hemingway is considered one of the, the, the classic, best written books of all time. Love it. Dr. Glover, um, I want to send men to you from all over the world. You know, I have an audience of all over the world and, and uh, mine, mine are specific for marriage. Mine are specific for, and I'm you know, a marriage go, and go family therapist. Wife. So, you know, we're, we're, you know, we, we, we work around the same stuff. I'm relationship oriented. Well, you know what I've learned in my journey? If I, you know, I like to be transparent we can't control her. So, you know, sometimes. <laughs> when did you some... figure that out? When, when did that <laughs> so, finally come to you? Actually, I learned that with my own journey, but actually fully, with men who level up and hey maybe they decided that she's not leveling up with him or maybe they yeah. decided that that um you know some of the mistakes weren't right it's not going to work or potentially she's just not going to follow the lead the new structure the new idea of what the new marriage could be like and so and, i've got a lot of men may, and she may bow down and say thank you i've wanted you to lead for so that, long that, that's yeah, the but, dream if, you never know that's what i want i've seen both <laughs> but, i've seen both same with me. You know, I'm not naive enough to think any more that I can save every marriage. I know my guys do. My guys definitely do. But the, uh, let's be real. I mean, come on. We yeah, can't be real. Can only, can, we can only take care place. of ourselves. Right. Yeah. So I really, really am thankful for that you're on here today. Where can I send men to get more from you? What is it? I know drglover.com, but is yeah. there an integration? A, dot yeah. Integrationnation.net. Perfect. So yeah, I know you'll, you'll give them a link to it. Integrationnation.net, drglover.com. You know, you, you can find everything I got going on at, at those two places. Yeah. And guys, just so you know, I mean, he's Dr. Glover has all kinds of tools in there. There's, there's resources for the nice guy. You've got your pet training. You've got dating essentials for men and now integration nation. You've got tons, tons of tons of stuff that I mean, I, I've applied I, to marriage. I, I, I've stayed busy. You, you stayed busy and you're one of my favorite people. Uh, the, the lessons oh, that you've taught me has, thank you, Cass. I just, it's so valuable. So I want to say thank you again for You're everything welcome. That you've done. Thank you for your kind words. I, I, I do like knowing that I make a difference for people. I, it does. Oh, massive. Good. And you know what? The ripple effect, you know, like right now I'm doing a lot of work with my men on purpose and legacy. I'd like to teach Beautiful. separate lessons from my course. Um, week to week Q and a, probably yeah. a lot like you, you would do in some of your programs and, yeah. We're going right into purpose right now and legacy and what that looks like. And, you know, with three calls in the last two days since my training talking about how their nice guy is affecting them and being afraid to go out and conquer this this yeah. dream that they have or that their wife might not approve or yeah. whatever. So the ripple effect of the work is not just on me, you know, being honored. I'm honored, I guess, you know, being able to share that work and pass it along. You've done a, you, your legacy, dude. It's, it's incredible, Dr. Glover. Thank you. Thank you, Cass. And thank you for the invitation to be here. I, I, it's, 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 it's been, it's been fun. You know, I've, I'm, I got three more hours on zoom today. I had three hours before I got with you. Um, my, you know, my, my butt's going to wear out before anything else sitting in this chair, but, uh, this has been the highlight of my day to spend this with you. Thank you. Oh, thanks for saying that. 
All right, Mr. Glover, oh, Mr. Dr. Glover, I like Robert's to be the respectful. <laughs> yeah, I know you always tell me, but I just, I can't. It's you know what? I, yeah, just call me King. I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you, you're pushing a little far. Come on, All come right. on. All right. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Cass, thank you. Bye-bye.